welcome to our small footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here, we are a family of eight who live off grid in Australia. So I hit a thousand subscribers, which is kind of exciting. It's been a lot of hard work, but it's been nice to have regular people to chat to and things like that. So part of that process was that I decided to make myself a special treat that I've found online over the last couple of weeks and it's from half Bake Harvest. I'll put a link on the bottom. Now, um, it didn't go completely to plan, but I'll show you the result. So this one here was the first one I made and we put it in the fridge and you can see when I tried to slice it, um, it just fell apart. So in the recipe, it has a cake layer and the cake layer it doesn't say to cool the cake layer before you put the mousse on and I thought it was kind of odd but I decided to follow the recipe because the recipe had heaps and heaps of really good reviews so I did um, but obviously that was a mistake so uh, what we've done though is that since we figured out it wasn't going to work is we put it in the freezer and this one has now been in the fridge for over 24 hours as well, which has made a bit of a difference. So the idea was to bake the cake, share the recipe with you because it sounded delicious, and sit and eat a slice with you. Now, it doesn't look as bad as it did when I first did it, but it still doesn't quite hold together or <laughs> it's just a little bit of a mess but Daryl says that it tastes absolutely delicious and I suppose that's the main thing but what I thought I'd try and show was that I decided to freeze one of them so the other thing is that the recipe states to do it in a um, in a spring what are they called? spring uh, like a one of the cake tins with the spring loaded sides which I don't own but so I decided to make it sort of like a cake it's uh, sort of like a pie sorry um, which you know could is is probably part of the messy factor of it because I'm not just sliding the sides off the tin but at the same time it's still it's still a little bit sloppier than I would expect so this one's been in the freezer which means that the top chocolate layer though is going to crack really badly when you try to cut it. So let's have a look at how this one comes out. Right, see look that's a, let me slide this slice across and put this one here. And, yeah, take advantage. So this one is a near perfect slice with the layers though the cake layer still got a little bit lost in the process so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share the recipe in the comments and suggest that you cool the cake layer before you put the mousse on it because as you can see the let me see if I can get this in focus the cake layer has sort of been left behind in the bottom of the pan because it got saturated by the mousse and didn't come through so this is a dairy-free espresso mousse pie and I'll put the link in the bottom now I'm just gonna stick these back in the fridge I'm gonna keep a piece out for myself and put the rest back in the fridge and freezer so that I can sit down and have a little bit of a chat to you and but to the flies we won't get into this so bear with me so it's a bit of a bad time of the day out here for sunlight wise. Let's see if we can line this up nicely. I don't do many shots of myself like this on camera because I find it really hard to get the camera angles correct within the small space in my kitchen. A kitchen like at the moment this tripod is sitting right in the middle of the walkway. Um, so if any children were out here it would be an issue. But I purposely chose right now because they're all inside and busy. Just it's I think it's four o'clock so we're going to start baths and dinner and stuff soon but for the moment they're busy and I'm gonna have a very late afternoon trip. so I'm gonna try this 
because I haven't really tried it yet. This is it frozen, which I imagine is going to be a bit like a chocolate cashew cheesecake. Mm. Very nice. And that's a frozen treat. As a frozen treat, I think lots of small pieces, it'll last me quite a while. This is dairy free, so everyone in the house can eat it. Um, it does have some instant coffee in it, but I'm not too concerned about that. But it does mean that I probably won't let the kids have too much. And it was a lot of work, so may as well keep it for myself. So, one of the main questions I got when I asked everyone what they wanted to know was how we got out here or why we came out here. So, we have been out here four years in June um, and we uh, at the time we prior to that we owned uh, franchises so uh, I did all the bookkeeping and the payroll and my husband ran the franchises and we owned four different shops and life was hard the kids were little the youngest was two so Karvik was two and the twins were three and the kids went up from that point there and um, Daryl worked I don't know 40 to 70 hours a week depending on which shops he had to work in and things like that and life in general was hard uh, he got a bit um, depressed and and frustrated with the way we were, things were going and my health declined so I got diagnosed with trigeminal neuralgia which is a chronic nerve condition that is a pain related condition that is degenerative and untreatable other than by medication which isn't very pleasant so I don't take a lot of the medication that is suggested for it because I don't feel like the benefits of the medication outweigh the quality of life so we decided that we needed a change so we bought the property out here as uh, the idea was a weekender we were going to use it as a as a getaway on the weekend set up something eventually and that sort of thing but my health declined rapidly and I got admitted to hospital a couple of times and Daryl's mental health declined rapidly as well so we quickly as quickly as we possibly could looked at selling the franchises and heading out here in a bit of a rush we also had problems with the house that we were renting we had considered purchasing the house but then because there was problems with the business we couldn't get the finance to purchase the house and basically the owner said well then get out which happens a lot in rentals so we did it in a hurry um, at the time it was pretty hard when we moved out here it was June it was winter and we um, had the buildings had the dongers on the premises only uh, when the dongers were delivered the gentleman who delivered the dongers delivered them backwards and we had to pay someone to come out and relocate them with a crane because they weren't positioned in a way that they could be turned into one building um, so that was an added stress there and we didn't have a wood stove or anything at the time and no walls as such so the when we purchased the dongers they used to be part of a mining building a mining accommodation on a mine site so they used to all be one long building and then we took three of those partials and put them in an L shape which meant that there was some walls but a lot of not walls I'll get a couple of photos and I'll put them up in while I'm talking so while we were doing that um, it was winter and so the kids there is a couple of sealed bedrooms so there's three meter by three meter rooms in two of the buildings that the children used as bedrooms but uh, my husband and I slept in a swag on the floor of the building uh, when we first moved out because there was no walls and we didn't have a wood stove and it was middle of winter so we did it all in a rush and um, it, you know it, it's nice to think that we could have done it with a bit more planning but life happened and that's the way it occurred and we don't regret it now because we may never have taken that leap if the circumstances hadn't pushed us to do it so by the push we did it less than optimally but we still did it in a way that got us to this point which is what we wanted eventually but the whole point was that it only intended to be a bit to be a weekend up so when we moved out, we moved out with just about nothing. We um, we hired a couple of shipping containers that we got filled 
in at the old place and then transported full here with all our stuff and then I did many dozens of trips with the the ute backwards and forwards up and down the range just picking up everything we could and cleaning the old rental and things like that um, we had next to no funds and we just did it how we had to do it and from that point forward we have just been doing things as we can picking up anything and everything second hand that we can anytime someone offers some free uh, building materials we always grab those because there's something that we can do with it it means that the place at the moment looks a little bit like a tip yard I suppose except that most of the stuff that's lying around is usable we just need to better allocate where it's going so that we know what we've got uh, the the process of moving out here we managed to get a second-hand kitchen that we put out on the patio uh, realized quite early on that we weren't going to be able to put a kitchen inside because there just wasn't enough room so our living space at the moment is six meters by 12 meters and there's two three meter by three meter bedrooms at one end which the children share the boys are in one room the girls are in another and Daryl and I have a bed in the opposite end of the space so that we use uh, bookcases and a wardrobe and stuff to sort of have walls I suppose so there's a lot of things on the on the agenda to adapt and 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 keep going with but money is always going to be an issue when you've got six kids and you're working contractually and um, choosing to do that then you know it's gonna cause a bit so the whole purpose so I suppose the whole decision for coming out here which is a lot of what was asked was that we decided that we were going to do it we did we decided we were going to set it up as a weekender and then we go from there um, and then life got in the way and so instead of being able to start it as a weekender and get ourselves set up and things like that uh, we had to just dive straight in we were really lucky that we had some really good friends who helped us move stuff up and down and who kept an eye out on stuff we got the fireplace a friend in brisbane got the fireplace for me the wood stove that we have inside uh, and it get the first winter it got down to negative eight so it got quite cold it hasn't been that cold since then but that that winter was really cold so we were very grateful for that wood stove and um they found it on gumtree or facebook marketplace or something down in brisbane for us and then helped me to manage to grab it so we've had a lot of friends who've helped in a lot of different ways and my mum has been a huge help in in many ways for doing in, in helping us get set up out here or that sort of thing and my aunt and uncle have let me post stuff to them so that I can pick it up from there too because postage out here is quite exorbitantly priced half the time and if you're in metro it's free so uh, we've had a lot of people who've given us a, a hand along the way which has been great um, and we've just put in a lot of work so it, it's not like it's ever been particularly easy but it's what we wanted to do which makes it easier then I'm getting eaten by mosquitoes so just excuse the occasional twitch um, it makes it easier to deal with is that so yeah so we're coming up to four years in June uh, we've come a really long way uh, from when we first moved out here but we've got a long way to go still I get asked one of the other questions I get asked a fair bit is what I do to relax or what I do for me I suppose and I, to be honest I really enjoy the kitchen work I actually find that 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 enjoyable and and somewhat relaxing um, having to do it for meals isn't necessarily the most thing like you know having to interrupt a day to do a dinner meal or a lunch or something like that isn't necessarily something that you enjoy but the being able to do the the preserving and the canning and the baking I really enjoy that but I read a lot I have a Kindle Unlimited subscription and I read a lot of books I also study when I have time I enjoy watching YouTube as well but I study I have a couple of herbalism courses that I've in progress at the moment so I enjoy doing those but I watch other people on YouTube as well of course got interrupted again so yes so I'm studying a herbalism course through Herbal Academy and a few other bits and pieces I did start a Bachelor of Science in Health Nutrition um, but I, I really don't have the time to put into it at the moment not with the kids so young and schooling them as well and then the gardens and everything else it was just too hard so whilst I could pass I couldn't pass well so I gave that up as well uh, I might come back to that later but for the moment it's just the wrong time for it so 
in regards to we got asked if we made any preparations and stuff before we moved out not really uh as i said the the move out was in a hurry so we didn't have time to plan we did build our um bucket toilet before we came out and tested out instant hot water and things like that i've got some photos of that um and things small things like that but in with we didn't know a whole lot about a lot but it's amazing what you can learn on the internet uh, so that's why we like to share now as well uh, had good general knowledge about a lot of things and the property that we lived in prior to this one was on a couple of acres and only had tank water and stuff as well so we, we were used to that um, we have the structures that we have built later on in the in the last say 12 months in comparison to the first 12 months are uh, far beyond what we did initially they're a lot better they're a lot squarer a lot more aesthetically pleasing so as we've gained experience from that then that has helped but at the same time we sort of have a property that my mom calls the house that Jack built because we have lots of little bits and pieces of things that are ongoing that we've used secondhand materials for and that we've had to do however we've had to do it because it just had to be done the gardens are a big learning process so we've expanded every year we went from a tiny little hoop house to adding on some using some metal hoop houses to extend it a little bit which are all falling apart now because they're not meant to be quite what we're using them for then we found uh, a marquee that a business was selling very cheap a big galvanized marquee so we extended on with that and then just this year we extended out further and put some fencing around some open space so that we could put that second solar array in each year i feel like i learn more but i fail in different ways so we're still working out the the microclimate so in winter here it, it gets down to on average about negative five is probably the lowest sort of a point and in summer it can get up to 45 48 hasn't been that hot this year but the humidity has been really bad because we've had all the unexpected rain uh, we have become acclimated uh, we definitely don't feel the heat or the cold anywhere near as much as we did that first year that first year was really hard but it's still temperatures that aren't particularly great for a lot of things and it's all a learning process so i log all our weather i have a weather station that we set up um six months after we got here maybe maybe it's 12 months and i have daily weather tracking for every day from that point forward and a spreadsheet that i put it all in to get averages maximums minimums when our first frosts are when our last frosts are all that sort of thing to help with the garden because the hope is that the garden will eventually feed us that we won't need to purchase vegetables um, and once the orchard is set up we won't need to purchase fruit either so planning wise to come out here general knowledge that's all we had and we have built on that as we've been here and we've figured out what we needed to do as it needs to be done uh, building we when we first built our first duck and chicken pen we didn't it was uh, a wire pen with uh, some poly pipe uh, tubing to create roofing and stuff like that and at one point a wild dog got in and killed a rooster and a drake and a hen they were obviously the rooster and the drake were trying to protect their ladies a hen got dragged away and the our drake bowie got killed in front of the tractors protecting his girls in the tractor and things like that so from that point forward we now our chicken and duck pen has a roofing iron that is sunk into the ground all the way around the perimeter and things like that so it's all been learning sometimes not a great way to learn but uh, you know that's how things have progressed so we didn't do anything specific before we moved out but we also did it in a rush <laughs> we didn't have a whole lot of time to figure it out and we keep on learning as we're here so we keep on changing things as we go and adding to things and figuring things out as we go along it's uh, a good thing like you can't plan certain things to happen like you you can't say that if this happens i'm going to do this until it happens so like the f last year not last year now but the year before we planted all our fruit trees on the 
right hand side of the house uh, thinking that it was a good open space the uh, human manure pit is that direction and so the the trick orchard could be in front of it could give us a bit of a screening it's the western wall of the house and all that sort of thing but the problem is is that we don't go out that way very often we didn't have a grey water irrigation set up yet all the fruit trees died because they just weren't consistently watered enough because we didn't plan the fact that by not having them near our garden and not having them near somewhere that we regularly go it didn't work so uh, by so we had to replant some of them survived and we have transplanted them to the new uh, orchard area and which is attached to part of the rest of the garden which means that we've got the grey water irrigation that runs through the berry plants but also through all the fruit trees so uh, taking being aware, taking note, and that sort of thing, that's the biggest thing for us. Other questions that I get asked. I got asked about my canning equipment. I'm going to make cowboy candy this week, I hope. So um, when I do that, I will go through all my canning equipment, and what canners I have and stuff like that, so that I can give some information to the people who are looking for it there. The sun has moved. I think I'm in a bad spot now. All right, I had to vacate the kitchen space for a bit because everyone came out and I'm gonna to have to start dinner shortly because otherwise the kids are going to cause issues. So I'm out the back where the washing line is, washing line. And just wanted to finish up. So I think I've covered most of the questions that were asked. Uh, most people were, when I asked if what people wanted to see, most people were happy to just watch whatever and they didn't have direct questions, mainly just why we came out here and why we decided to. So hopefully I've covered that. Any other questions about some of the food like I said I'll do my cowboy candy uh, this week sometime hopefully and I will uh, show you all the canners and stuff that I have and go through all that sort of information so I will do that this week hopefully I finished my bacon this morning we and we managed to pull it out and cook some up so I've got a bacon video to come out as well and I also made tortillas from scratch using lard so I've got a video on that as well they were really good coming out this week so other than that hopefully I covered everything and um, I will be back in a couple of days with something probably the bacon video because that's pretty exciting uh, we're going to make I'm gonna have sourdough pasta tonight uh, with the probably with the pesto sauce and some smoked chicken and bacon I think it'll be really delicious so yeah I think I think that covers most things so let me know if there's anything else you wanted to know in the comments and I'll keep on answering as I go through I can always answer something at the end of a video and uh, enjoy the footage that I've put through of the the start of our journey and and what we did here oh, the mosquitoes are horrible and I will see you in a couple of days thanks for watching guys